Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from NOLA again. And here's her story. Hi, Ollie. It's your favorite Southern Belle, NOLA. I'm keeping my promise and sending you some more content. I figured we have all been so wounded by these walking zombies and left in such dark places. So I thought I would lighten things up a bit. It's time for us to laugh at the narc. Here are some episodes from my life that I still laugh about to this day. Episode 1. We were living in the projects in New Orleans, and my and narcissistic mother was just coming out of the bathroom. Ugh, she, she wearing any clothes? It was just all out. She loved coming out naked. I knew it. I knew it. She loved coming out naked and dry off, scarred by brain for life. Ew. They all come out of the bathroom naked they don't give a fuck their nasty sniz their drooping tits their cottage cheese ass i look good like they all do it and here's the fucking thing i i i i, I just just motherfucking popped in my mind okay in my parents house okay their master bedroom was supposed to be their master bathroom the master bathroom was supposed to be a fourth bedroom upstairs. Was supposed to be the master bedroom. Okay? But whatever they did, they fucked up and they made what was supposed to be the master bedroom into the bathroom. So there was this giant bathroom. And what was supposed to be the bathroom at the end of the hallway was a giant walk-in, was now a giant walk-in closet. Where, where the shower was supposed to, stall was supposed to be, like it was, so like they had this bathroom as a giant walk-in closet, and that's how the house was built. So it was massive. But when you came out of the bathroom door, on the wall, right next to the, where, where the walk-in closet was, was a giant fucking mirror. A giant mirror, and right in front of my room, so you come up the spiral staircase, you have the master bed, the, mat, the the bathroom right to the right, directly to the right off the staircase, my parents' bedroom to the left, my bedroom next to theirs, okay, and then my brother's bedroom on the other side of the bathroom, and then there's this walk-in closet in the back of the hallway, and a... Um, what the hell, like a pantry closet next to the bathroom that used to lead up to a trap door to the attic before the pull-down thing came. So on that back wall, right next to my bedroom door, okay, so I could always, if my door, and I wasn't allowed to keep my door closed, so I had to fucking see everybody come out fucking naked, my mother walking out naked, and there it was, it would be projected in that, that mirror was in a spot where I could see it from my bedroom and my brother could see it from his fucking bedroom. The fucking savage. The fucking savage. Ugh. Ugh. Nasty, dirty bitch. Nasty, dirty bitch. Excuse me, I might need my bug spray too. Because those little black gnats from the, from the roof pounding, they got all got knocked out. She always said she wanted her children and her grandchildren to see her naked so that if something happened and they needed to call the ambulance, her grandchildren wouldn't be ashamed. <laughs> you got some fucking... They all run the same goddamn playbook, man. They all run the same playbook. Rich, poor, black, white, it don't matter. It don't matter. Deviant, deviant. Narcissism, borderline personality is borderline personality. No matter what the shade, color, econo economic range, it doesn't matter. They all run the same fucking playbook. They all run the same playbook, same formation. And you can tell you, tell you it's coming. I know it's coming because I know the plays. I study these people. Sick logic, which is why she has never even babysat my two. No way. Well, good.
golden child baby sister thought this would be a good time to prank her dear old mama. She found a stick pin and placed it ever so gently under the covers on the bed. When narcissistic mother sat down to finish drying off, she sat her big ass right on that pin. She jumped so high in the air, you would have thought she was trying to catch the sky. When she realized what had happened, she turned to her golden baby, Ollie. She balled up her fist and punched her like Debo on Friday. She got knocked the fuck out. Baby sister went flying across the floor like she had been launched from a cannon. She landed face up on the floor with, with her feet and legs pointed straight up due north. It was like she had been, she had instantly developed rigor mortis. Ollie, I hollered. I laughed so hard. I cried myself to sleep with glee. It was priceless. My soul was tickled. Yeah, because she got knocked the fuck out. You got knocked the fuck out. Your mother got stuck in her fat ass, and your sister got knocked the fuck out. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Episode 2. Baby sister thought since she was the baby, she could do whatever she wanted and not get into trouble. She didn't realize that narcissistic mothers are not loyal to anyone but themselves. She decided it was a great day to take a butter knife to the blue bricks that lined the walls of the apartments in the projects. These bricks were so nasty that even they would even sweat in the summertime like a real human. Don't ask me what kind of pain it was, but baby sister thought she would leave her autograph on the wall for all to see. She took a putter knife and carved giant letter M into the paint. Oh my God, why did she do that? Narcissistic mother got up from her nap and noticed the large print on the wall. She didn't have to wonder who might have done the damage because baby sister and surrogate were the only ones in the apartment who shared the same initial on the wall. Surrogate wasn't home at the time, so the jury deliberated and she found out and she found and she was found guilty. Only found guilty. Hold that last syllable. Narcissistic mother got her again. Yes, she beat the brakes off her baby and had her walking around that apartment for damn near two weeks like He Man of Masters of the Universe. My little heart felt vindicated that day for once, just once, I felt like justice had been served. The scapegoats won one. It's a shame though. You know, the, the, it's nice to watch him get, get, take an ass whipping, but it's a shame that that's, I mean, it's so unhealthy for us. Like that's an, and you know, for you as a black woman, like again, like you shouldn't want to see your sisters getting fucked up, but I understand why. I understand why at least some justice is being served for once. Episode number three. These project tales are, are a mess, Ollie. But a family friend was babysitting for narcissistic mother while she went to make groceries. Friend told us that we could go to the little park in the center of the project and play on the monkey bars. We were super excited because Narcissistic Mother would never let us do that. We went to the park and had a blast. Narcissistic Mother comes home and catches us at the park. She did her whole public embarrassment spiel and called us every name in the book. We were every dumb motherfuckers and stupid bitches and she's gonna fuck us up. She grabbed an extension cord from the side of the concrete steps and started wielding it over us. She was swinging so hard you could hear the wind whoosh by, by with each thrash. We were running up the stairs as quick as we could to get away from her. She was chasing behind us like the demon she is, and Ollie, she fell. <laughs> she fell going up the stairs, the concrete steps. Ollie, Ollie, I was in so much pain, but Lord help me, I was rolling laughing on the inside. I, she looked at me and said, Hey, Nola, you bitch. I hope, I know you are saying, I know you are, I know you are saying in your mind, that's good for me. And this time she was right. My soul was tickled and momentarily satisfied. Finding, you know, 
getting hit with an extension cord, which I had been, so I know what that feels like. Like trying to find moments of, of good in that is 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 incredible. I mean, there's is tales tales from the hood, the new tales from the hood, man. Episode four. We in these projects again, Ollie. Narcissistic mother came home and was bragging about the delicious pecan pie she had purchased from the city's most popular bakery. She was trying to charm everybody and just being a big ass child. Talking about how good that pie was going to be. And how she was going to top it off with some vanilla bluebell ice cream. Couldn't tell her nothing. She was drunk with power, torturing her kids with the delicious treat because she wasn't giving us none of it. I hope that was when Bluebell had the recall and everybody was getting salmonella. Well, she put that damn pie on the counter and opened the refrigerator to get her ice cream. When she closed the door on the refrigerator, she accidentally bumped the counter and the pie went flying right across the counter into the sink with dirty dishwasher. Soap suds were everywhere and the pie sank to the bottom like it was the Titanic. Ollie, the look on her face, I was giddy as Ralphie on the Christmas story that day. You know, these small moments of victory, are, are, I mean, I understand. It's sad that this is what you got to hold on to, though. Like, this is it. Like, the fat, cunts, the fat cunt's pie fell in the goddamn dirty dishwater so she couldn't eat it in front of you. And good for it. I mean, that's karma, but that's also fucking really, really sad. Really, really sad. And I'll tell you something else, because... You know, something occurred to me after your last, um, after your last uh, letter to me, Noah. Uh, some I, I I didn't know, or I, I I guess maybe I didn't remember, but I don't know if you had ever mentioned that you were married to a uh, to a preacher. And understand something. I mean, what we're talking about when we talk about you know you know the narcissistic queen bee, and who made her, you know taking those policies from that white liberal. I mean, there's a third person. There's a third person involved in all that dysfunction. It is that preacher in the black community because those churches, those institutions of failure, and I'm not saying this about your husband's church, and I, I, I'm pretty confident that you wouldn't be with somebody like that, but I know how it is around here where there's these churches every every hundred feet. They've been here every, they've been here for a damn near 100 years, okay, in these neighborhoods that never get any better, okay, yet the pews are filled with these same narcissistic queen bees every Sunday, giving this preacher, you know, their money, and he does what? He forgives them for their sins, and then we're not even going to talk about the debauchery of that man, where, you know, he's getting members of his congregation pregnant, he's getting, you know, but that's a thing. See, the overall my, the overall point is that queen bee, that 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 urban queen bee, that narcissistic queen bee. She looks up to that preacher. That preacher gives her salvation. That preacher tell that preacher gives her a pass in her dysfunction. The fact that you're married to a preacher is drives her fucking insane. Okay, that's top level. That's top shelf. You got yourself a preacher. A preacher. Now, in most situations, like I said, that preacher is just as responsible for the condition of the black community. Now, I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure you're not involved in that with your husband, but understand something. Your mother sees you married to a preacher, and in your mother's eyes, I'm sure that preacher is about as high level as you can get in that community. That's another source of her jealousy and her hatred and your sister's hatred towards you. Beyond your career, I mean, beyond your career in media and the other things you've done and accomplished, who you're married to, you being married to that preacher, drives her crazy, crazy, crazy. 
Episode number five. Okay, here is my final project tale for the community. Narcissistic mother has never owned a new car and would always take hand-me-down transportation from relatives because her credit was so bad. Well, my uncle decided he wanted to get rid of his big burgundy and white 1975 Lincoln Continental. Jesus, is that a boat? So he could upgrade to the newest 1988 town car. He had the car towed to the projects just for her. Isn't he such a good brother? Not. Ollie, this car ain't never work. Never. It was the size of a battleship. Oh, I know. That's why I said it's a fucking tank. It took up three parking spot spaces in the project and never worked. She was so excited when she got it. She was bringing to her, she was bragging to all her friends. Child, I got me a Lincoln Continental now. Hot damn. Really, Ollie? For that, it's, yeah, it's all about the image. Okay? Look, your mother, that was, insta that was her posting the Instagram and Facebook and selfieing. Look, that was your mother. Your mother invented the queen bee, the narcissistic queen bee, invented the selfieing, invented the bullshit Instagram profile. Okay? So before Instagram and Facebook, you just had to buy a 1975 fucking Lincoln Continental and park it out there in the goddamn projects. There's Instagram. Selfie. Selfie with a Polaroid. There it was. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. For that gas guzzling repair needing needed needing broken down hoopty. Yep, it's it's all about the image. It's all about the image. Sometimes she would just go outside exactly and sit in the damn car like Instagram before Insta like you, you seeing you seeing the connection? Are you seeing the connection here? I think it was there so long, Hurricane Katrina didn't even want it. For all I know, it is probably still parked over there, lol. She then upgraded to a 1979 Mercury Cougar. Yeah, she was still styling and profiling with some stencil glue on, stick on letters in the real windshield with her nickname plastered across the top. She wanted all the world to see. Can you imagine being a preteen? Getting picked up in front of the in front of school in that coffin. Well, dude, she's you know dicking attention, dicking attention. She don't care. She don't care. She don't give a fuck. Imagine if your mother had Instagram and Facebook. Imagine if you were growing up with your mother now, what she would be like. Imagine what her social media would look like now. Ooh, 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 be happy. Be happy, Nola, you missed it. Be happy. I think about that all the time. I'm like, Christ, man. I, I think about not even so much what my mother would have been like. I think about what Virginia, my grandmother, my, she would have been all about all about Facebook and Instagram and then selfieing. Like, oh, oh, she'd break the internet. Thank God. Thank God your mother's not, 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 not the age she was then now. She'd break the fucking internet. Your mother would be up on the hood of a car on all fours with her fat ass up in the air twerking that shit. Twerking it, twerking it, twerking it. The narcissistic queen bee has been fucking twerking since the since the sixties. Twerking since the sixties. Okay, that's what that fucking Lincoln Continental was. That was her twerking. That was her her ability. That's as far as they could take it then. With your mama having holes in her shirt, no bra on, 
boobs hanging out down to her knees, hair all over her head, because she didn't want people who I went to school with to think Nola's mama was white. Grr. She knew I was ashamed because... She knew I was ashamed because she was black. No, sir. No, ma'am. I was ashamed because she was ignorant and histrionic, and she caused scenes wherever, wherever she went on purpose. That is what I was... That is what I was ashamed of. Any, I'm sorry. That is what I was ashamed of. Anyway, hopefully some of the community got a chuckle out of my life and found the joy to push through one more day. Talk to you soon, Nola. Nola, you know, it's good for you to get a chuckle as a comforting thing, so you know, to comfort yourself, okay? But never forget, as funny as these moments are, the fact that they happen are incredibly sad. It's incredibly sad, you know. So yeah, I, I appreciate you trying to br trying to bring levity to this situation, you know. But the the fact that they happen is just it's just they're they're funny. Each story is funny on its own, but the fact that they happen it still kind of bums you out a little bit too on the on the same level. Like God damn it. Think about it. Think about if your mother had Instagram now, had Facebook now. Shit. She'd be, like I said, they've been twerking since the 60s. That narcissistic queen bee has been twerking on Instagram since the 60s. Period. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much for another contribution and story, Nola. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to have a private video made, or you'd just like to make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all of this goes away and YouTube and Google would like that to happen sooner than later. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. You could also follow me on the library app, links provided in the description box. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care, everybody.